What's going on everyone out there in YouTube land? So someone has finally done it and I knew, I just had a feeling this was going to happen, but someone has taken mesh and put it into a sub-ohm tank. If you guys are familiar with all these mesh RDAs that are floating around, well someone took that idea and put it into a tank. They're using the mesh as the coil, not as the wicking material. Today we're going to check out the Freemax Firelook mesh sub-ohm tank. Got it sitting on top of this DNA 250, vaping it at 75 watts. Got it loaded up with some of the delicious Portuguese custard known as nada. Let's have a quick vape and we'll get into it. Mmm. Mm. Now the mesh sub ohm tank was sent over directly by Freemax. For the purpose of this review, if you guys are looking to pick one up, I did do a search online and I found absolutely nothing. So I emailed Freemax, I said, what's the deal? How much is this thing? What's the retail price? Who's gonna sell it? They emailed me back, they said this is gonna cost around $33 to $37.99 and they gave me a huge list of vendors who will stock it. So I will take that list and drop it in the description. So let's have a closer look at the new Fireluke Mesh Sub-Ohm Tank. This one coming from Freemax. A quick look at the presentation box. It does come in your typical plastic hard shell box. Inside the box, you guys will get the Fireluke Mesh Sub-Ohm Tank. You'll get a coil head pre-installed. They're also going to include the drip tip. They're going to toss in a additional coil head, so you'll get two in total. You'll get a little baggie of O-rings, and they're going to toss in an extra glass tank. Now the Fire Loop Mesh Tank is available in six different color options. So right off the bat, they actually included some color options, which is nice. This one measures 24 millimeters at the base. At the top, they're going to include an 810 style drip tip. And you'll notice the pattern on the tank and the coil and the drip tip. It has like a mesh kind of pattern to it. Some people are gonna like it, some probably not gonna like it. Now the 810 drip tip they provide is a nice tight fit, but I did notice when using other A10 drip tips, some are really loose and some fit really tight. Like for instance, this one right here that I use on my Goon, it just fits way too loose. So it's gonna be really picky about which drip tips you use. Now the mesh tank does have top fill and to fill it up, just unscrew the top cap. It makes it really easy because of this knurling or pattern that we have going on. We're gonna have two large fill ports located at the top and the mesh tank does hold three mLs of liquid so it does hold a decent amount. At the bottom, we do have dual airflow control slots and each of those air slots measure 11 millimeter by 2.4 millimeter. And of course, you can close it off for a more restricted vape. We do have stopping points on the airflow control ring to make it much easier to remove the base. And then at the bottom, something you never see, an adjustable 510 pin on a sub-ohm tank. I don't think I've ever seen that before, but we do have an adjustable gold-plated 510 pin. Breaking down the tank, you guys will see that this is a two-piece tank section. We have a pretty beefy O-ring holding on the glass. And you'll see the finish is like a anodizing of some sort. They did a really nice job on all the machine work. Now inside the kit, they're going to include two coil heads. These are going to be a 0.15 ohm coil rated 40 to 90 watts. And to my knowledge, this is the only coil they offer at the moment. Now they are using Japanese organic cotton and they are using canthal mesh on the inside. They're not using stainless steel mesh. They're using canthal mesh. And we're going to break this down just to get a look at the mesh. I've did this before on another coil head. And the way they did it was they soldered some no resistance leads onto a sheet of mesh. And then they have the cotton surrounding the mesh. It's actually a pretty genius way they did this. So here's the mesh. And I believe these are going to be no resistance leads. And I think they're soldered on or well, I'm not sure exactly how they do this process, but you can see how they're on there. And yeah, this is going to be the mesh. And the cotton on the inside surrounds the mesh. And I must say that these coils perform really, really well. The mesh heats up really, really quick. This is at around 45 watts. And this coil head, once again, rated up to 90 watts. And I find it to be perfect at around 75 or 80 watts. So let's talk a little bit about the mesh sub-ohm tank. Now, I've had this for almost a week. Tomorrow will be one week. 
been vaping it every single day. And the reason why I wanted to vape this every single day was to make sure that this didn't suffer from the same issue that the RDAs suffer from. Like, for instance, if the cotton gets too dry or if the cotton isn't touching the coil, depending on the juice you're using, it could end up shooting flames out of the drip tip. So the first thing I wanted to make sure was that I could not for any reason shoot flames out of this thing. I've tried vaping it dry. I've tried just putting a few drops in there and just laying on the button. And no matter what I do, the only thing that happens is the cotton burns. That's it. There's no flames that shoot out of it. So with that said, Freemax did their homework and they designed these coil heads really, really well because you they do not suffer from the same issue that the RDAs do. So that is a huge bonus. Now, when comparing the stainless steel mesh coil up against a traditional canthal or stainless steel coil head, I will tell you these things wick up very, very fast. Um, you can chain vape on this thing with no problem at all. On a traditional sub-ohm tank, if you chain vape, the more you chain vape, the drier the coil head gets because it can't feed quick enough. Also another thing is stainless steel or canthal mesh, it's very rare that you get a hot spot with mesh. And with a traditional coil head, when you take a vape and you get that really nasty burnt hit, like the UL coils had that one issue with, those coils are very known for having hot spots occasionally. With the mesh, you hardly ever get hot spots. So you don't have to worry about getting a nasty burnt hit off one of these coils. So they really did their homework. As far as the coil life, I will say this. On day six, the coil head still performed well, but it's, it couldn't chain vape as well as it did on the first day. And cranking it up to 90 watts, I couldn't really lay into it like I did on day one. So with that said, you're gonna get about a week to a week and a half probably off one of these coil heads, maybe even longer depending on your wattage. If you're vaping it really, really low, it might last you even longer. But I'm gonna say to be on the safe side, about a week if you're running this thing at full max, and that's when the flavor starts to diminish. It's not gonna completely like burn out on you. So let's have a quick vape and we'll go through a few things about this. I'm gonna show you guys really quick that you can chain vape this thing without any problem. Three milligrams, so if I pass out, just call 911. I can sit here and do this all day. I can chain vape it until the tank is dry and I will not get a dry hit. So these coil heads, I was shocked because I thought this tank was gonna be a fail, but these coil heads are amazing. So talking about the drip tip, the drip tip on here, a little bit too low profile for me. I know some of you guys love that low profile stuff, so you'll enjoy it, but I did notice certain A10 drip tips are a little too loose inside of here. So once again, it's gonna be a little picky about the drip tip that you use. As far as the knurling or the mesh kind of pattern it has, some people are gonna like it, some are gonna dislike it. But I will say, it makes for a nice little grippy surface, so that way you can unscrew the cap and you can unscrew the base. The color options are kind of cool because you can interchange the parts and the coil like I did there. It's gonna get a little expensive for Freemax to start pumping out all these different color coils in the same resistance though, so kind of a bummer for them. The top fill, really easy, nice smooth threads on there, nice large fill ports. It holds three ml of liquid. It doesn't really burn through liquid all that much, um, probably a little bit more than your traditional sub-ohm tank, but nothing too bad to where I'm going to complain about it. The airflow options, lots of airflow in this sub-ohm tank. For being such a small tank, it has a lot of airflow. When I usually vape it at home, I'll close it off to about halfway, and that seems to be perfect. The really strange thing about this tank is that it has an adjustable 510 pin. Out of all the sub-ohm tanks I reviewed over the years, I don't think there was one sub-ohm tank that I've seen that had a adjustable 510 pin. I'm not too sure why they decided to do that, um, but the option is there if you need it. Uh, as far as the machine work and everything else, they did a really good job. I have absolutely no complaints about this one, guys. The only thing I complain about is probably the drip tip. The occasional 810 drip tip might be a little loose. Aside from that, Freemax did an awesome job and I have to congratulate them because it's been a while since Freemax has put something out that's been pretty amazing, but this right here, this is gonna open doors to other mesh tanks, and I'm really excited about that because I love mesh. But yeah, that's all I got for you guys today on the mesh sub-ohm tank. Did I forget anything? I feel like I forgot something. No, that's it. Oh, the vape. Did I mention the vape? 
It vapes beautifully. It's a nice warm vape. It's not cool. It's not hot. It's a nice flavorful vape. It's not like a juicy saturated vape, but it is a flavorful vape. But overall, man, if you guys are into sub-ohm tanks, this is one you want to add to the list. I guarantee it. That's it. That's all I got for you guys today. If you have any comments or questions on the mesh sub-ohm tank, please feel free to leave them below. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'll talk to everyone very, very soon. Make sure you guys build safe and vape on.